an instrument like no other instrument in the world. It's the Ampeg Patch 2000. <laughs> jump straight into the guitar, it's important to put everything into context. With the boom of the popularity of the electric guitar in the West came the beginning of builders trying to pursue the success of Gibson and Fender. There were many infamous copies of American instruments being made in this era. These mainly came out of Japan, like Takamine, Tokai, and Ibanez. Builders in Europe had a different response, however, and one of these brands was Hagstrom, or Hogström, if you want to pronounce it correctly. It was founded by Albin Hogström in 1925 in Elvdalen in Sweden. Originally, they imported accordions from Germany and then later Italy before opening their own facility in 1932. And until 1958, they just made accordions. But in 1958, the company started making electric guitars. Their first guitars incorporated the materials that they had from their accordion production. Here's a Hagstrom Deluxe, their first production guitar. And the picture on the screen now is actually an, a Hagstrom that was owned by Kurt Cobain of Nirvana. Other notable players of Hagstroms include Bob Seeger, Frank and Dweezil Zappa, Elvis Presley, Noel Redding, Cat Stevens, David Bowie, and of course both Rutger Gunnarsson and Björn Ulvius from ABBA. Unlike the copies from Japan, Hagstrom had a different answer to the American guitars, with their own style and construction. Arguably, the most popular Hagstrom guitar was the Swede. Released in 1970, the Swede boasted a plethora of innovations in design and distinguishing features. One, maybe the most notable, the H Expander truss rod which helped keep the necks of their guitars from twisting over time and allowing for a thinner neck, a two-bolt neck design which allowed for easy replacement of necks, and then a very art modern or deco styling. The guitar I have for you today may look like a Swede, but it's a whole different beast. This guitar was based off of the Swede platform and was produced between 1976 and 1979 but this is called a Hagstrom Patch 2000. This guitar is finished with a nice barbecue burst type finish with a matching neck. This is a very rare finish because most Patch 2000s were finished in a natural mahogany, which ended up being sort of a light brown. This body is really thick and has that old school Les Paul weight to it. Um, it has two strap buttons at the bottom of the guitar, which can be found on a lot of modern guitars, but that's so you know, when you put it down and you lean it on something, it won't fall over. It has your typical Les Paul layout with two volumes and two tones for each pickup, uh, three-way toggle switch, and some really, really sweet sounding vintage humbuckers. Very PAF inspired. Now, onto the most intriguing part of this guitar. Each string on this guitar has a current flowing through it, and each fret has a wire connected to it. And so when you touch the string with the current to a fret, it grounds out the signal and completes the circuit. And once that circuit is complete, the signal that's created can be sent out of the guitar and into a synth in order to control it. This was done through an early MIDI type signal. However, instead of a five pin connector, as you would typically find on MIDI, it has a seven pin connector. This guitar came with a pedal which allowed it to interface with the synth and on this pedal there was a pitch control and there was a glide control and a fifth harmony button. Unfortunately I don't have this pedal or a synth, so here are some clips of the Hagstrom Patch 2000 in action. <laughs>
Jampeg Patch 2000 lets the musician play the guitar with one hand, the synthesizer with the other. No other system in the world is so flexible. You've heard Steve Pacelli play the patch, but you haven't heard anything yet. Wait until you get the patch in your hands. Talk to your Ampeg dealer or call or write Ampeg direct.